Yeah, uh, D.A. Mary Burrell, yeah. Um, she my son, uh, uh, she a Malcolm Buford, and she, uh, touch it, and does ma? Oh, touch it, and does ma? I don't, uh, I don't know how to say the clan system. I'm trying to introduce myself. I'm trying to say I'm touch it, that's my grandma, touch it, I don't, my Nola, my grandma, my dad's mom, who is a Mexican, so I say Nakai, not Nakai Jana, so I say Mosa, Mosa Yashin, alright, the guy, Mosa, um, Sunne, because she's old, not young. So, um, hi, this is my grandmother, and this, I'm Malcolm, and, um, so I am an amateur rug weaver. <laughs> yarn spinner, uh, yeah, I say yarn spinner, amateur yarn spinner, and um, the way I do it is like the traditional Navajo way with um, carding tools, hand carding tools, and uh, this here. This is called the spindle, and in Navajo, um, Hoshulia? Bed is Bed is it? Eh. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. So, bed is old, yeah? D. D. A. Uh, bed is with a Z. Z. And that's used to spin the yarn. Okay. So. Okay. So, in the Navarro tradition, you have four clans. You have your um, mom's mother's clan. Or your mom's first clan, which is for me would be Touchy and would be her. That's my mom's mother. And then the next clan would be your dad's mom. And so I say I'm Mexican. And then after that, you would say your mom's dad's clan. And I would say Nanist uh, Eje Dene. And um, that translates to the Zuni clan. And for my last clan, since like we're not Navajo there, I would say. Um, Ginny. <laughs> that's it's a derogatory term, but yeah, that's like the that's how you say you're black, basically. So well, those are my four clans, or that's how I would introduce myself in Navajo. So okay, the so after you got the spindle and then you got the carding tool here, the hand card tool. So D Hoshlia. Behani Chade. Behani Chade. Oh. Behani Chade. That's this. So, with here, this is where you start the yarn making process. Behani Chade. Oh. I might be saying it wrong because. So, this is where you start. You get your carding tool, make sure it's clean, there's nothing on it. Or you can see little bits of hair on mine, but that's fine. Since we're doing the same color, you're gonna take this. This is raw wool after i sheared the sheep i washed it i bleached it i took all the oil and grease out so you left with little clumps of this stuff and that's what you make your yarn out of so this is where grandma comes in handy because i didn't know what to do and she grew up doing this as a little girl and she wove rugs and all sorts of things so she was a big help in learning how to do this in youtube i was looking at youtube videos and the, i had a teacher showed me showed me once or twice. Shh. <laughs> oh, no. So you just take it, and what you do? Well, that was kind of rude of me to say that. I said no. <laughs> that was like here, kind of. It's like uh, I don't mean to be rude, but it's like I don't a lack of uh, language on my part. You know, like I don't really know how to say. Here you go. Can you, like, help me make a YouTube video? <laughs> but I'll get there someday. She doesn't really understand what's going on. But she does. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is I'm fluffing the fibers like that. Fluff, fluff, fluff. After you fluffed it a little bit, you start to see the trash fall out. So, this is like combing the, combing the, the sheep out, kind of manually a little fiber at it every fiber at a time <laughs> every clump of hair at a time so after you do that a little bit you get yourself sell ah, you get yourself a nice little ball a little going and then 
we're gonna want to work it this part is kind of easy you don't want to apply too much pressure but you don't want to do it too lightly because then nothing's gonna happen so just go ahead and keep going same direction brush down pull up down pull up and then you just keep going maybe work it like 20 30 times <laughs> it just depends on how strong you are too because what you're doing is pulling the fibers out making them go run in the same direction so after you do that a while you start to see it it's like running in the same direction so you're going to want to take it like this and then you're going to start from the bottom and go up go <laughs> You see that clump right there? Okay, so you flip it, flip hands. This one's clean, and then you just start brushing it down like that again. Same process, and then you'll start to see it happen. Like everything starts to neatly come out. I guess comb out into the right direction. And there's gonna see little balls anymore. All the trash fell out, and then you're gonna flip it again. Maybe 20 or 30 times is too many times. Maybe like. 15, 15, 20 max. <laughs> so just keep doing it. The more you do it, the easier it'll come, or the easier it'll be to spin with this. So you just want it to look really nice so it goes really easy on the next step. Brush it out a while. See that first step I was doing? That's what she's doing. She's like fluffing it. And it really does help me having her do that. It's like cheating in a way because someone's doing the first step for me. But she gets bored, you know, like she can't read, but she looks likes looking at magazines, but that does get boring. So it's like mental stimulation. <laughs> so just keep brushing the crap out of there. Flip it, do it again. Take everything off, this one's clean. Hmm. And then just one more time. Just keep going. The more you do it, the better it comes out. There's no limit to how many times you do this, just personal preference, I guess. Just how clean you want your yarn to come out at the final product. So let's see. And that's how I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. So to pull it off, you get a clean one and you get this. Instead of starting from the bottom, you're gonna start from the top like this. And you're just gonna pull, pull it off like that gently. And you see how it comes off? Just like that, boom. So there, that's what they call a lamb's tail. That's like the beginning process or stage of it. So here, she, this is like her favorite part. She, she'll like take these from me and that's <laughs> a bit of what? I found a way to cheat. Use your jeans. So, let's see if I can do this here. You go palms right here and then the jeans create the friction to like make the noodle. <laughs> Turn the lamb's tail into a noodle type. So, I'm pulling it down and stretching at the same time like <sighs> back and then pulling out. And then you can start to see how the noodle gets thin and longer. You just do this as much as you want. Well, not as much as you want, it's like a decent size. And just um, be careful because if you do it too hard or don't do it enough, it'll start to fall apart and then you gotta card it again to make it stick again or make some yarn so there that's the length that came out so let's see got some trash on there this is a uh, yarn I already started to spin so there's that it looks like this so Um, I think I'm just gonna start it start it new. So I'm just gonna wind this up and push it down there. It's a beaded spindle. It looks like candy to me. It reminds me of like Skittles and rainbows and stuff. My uh, weaving teacher instructor gave it to me as like the gift. So 
I'm all excited every time I use that. This reminds me of some candies. Okay, let's see. So when you start a new one, you're gonna wanna get this tip wet so it causes friction between the wool and the wood, and then it'll start to stick and spin and actually create that whole spindle effect. So the easiest way to do it is just lick, lick the thing. So just, there you go, it's licked, it's wet, it's moist. You shove it on like that, and then you start to spin it. Let's see, and you get it on, and then you spin it like that. <laughs> okay, right there. Spin, spin, and then you pull slightly. You spin, and then you pull. Sp pull a little bit till it gets like a uniform sh size all the way for a little bit. As much as you can handle, I guess. Let's see, it keeps falling off. <laughs> no worries, just keep putting it back on till it sticks. See, right there is kind of fat, so I'm gonna pull that like so, and then spin some more, get it tight. Spin some more, get it tight. Spin some more, get it tight. Push down, wrap it a little bit. Spin some more, get it tight. Spin some more. Right there you go. Keep twisting. Spin, 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 pull, and the more you get it down, it'll start to become easier to you, and you can start doing it like here. Wind up some more, pull that out, fluff, spin, get it tight. This is just like the beginning, beginning noodle, so it takes, takes a little time to get it started, but once you get it going, it goes pretty easy. Spin, spin, spin. Pull a little bit at the same time. Just slightly pull and then hold it so it twists. And then you're pulling and while it's twisting. But don't pull too hard because you break it. It's, it's like a delicate process and it takes practice to master. Spin, spin. starts to get easy at a, like a longer length so but it it's, uh, gets thicker so it's like you have to come bring it back down here to get the consistency so you pull wind up a little bit and while you're winding up here after you've made like a little bit you can start to see the chunks where it's fat and skinny so what you do when you're winding it up is you just pull and stretch Pull and stretch. And then any little parts in your yarn that's like, not ugly, but like inconsistent, you just do that. And then if you like how that looks there, you just wind it up. And then you're done, move on to the next section. And then you just keep going until you're done with the noodle and then you connect another noodle. So. The thickness really depends on you and how you like to weave. I'm not that great of a weaver yet, so when I warp my loom, I guess I'm inconsistent. And it it doesn't really work out sometimes, because sometimes the, the, the warping strings are like really close together. So they start to show on some spots if I use too thick of a yarn. So I learned if I like make it almost thread-like, like, like uh, this stage right here, if I pull it really thin, and fine, it's way better when I weave so the warping strings don't actually show. But I'm pretty sure like if I start warping the loom right and start correctly spacing everything out, I can start weaving with like a thicker yarn and it'll make my 
leavings go faster. So you just keep doing that and then you wind up and then you start again. Pull, twist, pull a little bit. See that? It starts thinning out the more you pull, but it gets dangerous. The more you pull, it's like it'll snap. So you stop before you feel it snap and then you wind up some more and then you can pull again. And then you pull again. You can see it. And if you want to go really fast, you just pull and twist at the same time. So it's like. So that's how you make yarn. Lamb's tail. And um, yeah. So um, I'll think of another weaving lesson to show you guys, and I'll. I'll film it.